Hello, this is Dr. Don Michael and welcome to my show. Today I'm going to be talking about sex after 50 for both men and women and what changes take place in the body as well as in the mind and even spiritually. So as we mature, so does our sex life, our sexual desires, the way our bodies perform, and both men and women go through these changes and oftentimes we are not aware of them or we don't have the proper information on what's going on with our body and sometimes we can jump to conclusions we can search out particular medical procedures hormones medications so on and so forth uh, when we don't have the full picture of what might be taking place with our bodies. So I'm going to go over some of that with you so that you are armed with knowledge and you can make the right decisions uh, for yourself. So first I'm going to start with hormones. And this affects both men and women. So women who uh, are going through menopause, uh, or even perimenopause, postmenopause, the hormones do change. And what happens mostly is that your testosterone levels may get a little bit lower. Your estrogen levels may get a little bit lower, but your testosterone levels are the same. So it may appear that your testosterone levels are a little higher, but really what's going on is it might not all be balanced out. So it's very important that if you're feeling any change in sexual desire, if your body is not functioning sexually as it used to, that you definitely go get your hormones checked. Now, some of the things that can happen with women and your body is that your vagina might get dry, so you may still be aroused, but you will notice that your vagina is dry. And that usually has to do with your estrogen levels being way too low. Now, if that happens, tearing can take place because the skin becomes delicate and it might cause some uh, tearing of the skin during intercourse, some chafing of the skin, and it also can affect blood flow. And when women are not properly getting aroused, this can create a multitude of problems when it comes to sex. And this is very important because if... Um, if you are a man and you're watching this, you might want to have your wife watch this as well, or you might want to also understand what's happening to her and vice versa when I get into what goes on with the man's body. So sometimes women can get um, urinary tract infections when they're not aroused enough. And the reason being is both men and women have erectile tissue. That erectile tissue is either in the clitoris or, you know, the entire vulva. So the clitoris, the vagina, the clitoral lips, they all get engorged with blood. They all fill with blood when a woman is turned on, when she's aroused. Just like with a man, when he gets an erection, that's where the blood flow comes into place and he gets an erection. Well, the same thing happens to a woman. Now, if she's not getting fully aroused, then she's not having that added cushion. And so if that's taking place, then her urethra, which also fills with blood around it to protect it, can get hurt or damaged. And that hurt or damage can lead to a urinary tract infection. And so if you're noticing that you're getting urinary tract infections, and this can also happen at any age for a woman, but if you're um, past... Uh, met, or you're in menopause and you're getting urinary tract infections, this could be part of it is that you're not being fully aroused and so you're not getting fully engorged. So you must keep that in mind. It's very, very important. The other thing that happens with women with age is that the Kegel muscles, um, they loosen up. So it's like a meshing that holds everything up and that meshing becomes looser 
uh, when you become older. And so that can cause, when you laugh, uh, urination to come out. That could cause for weaker orgasms. And so what you want to do is Kegel exercises, so you increase that muscle. And if it's really bad, then it's important to go see your doctor about it and see what uh, there is out there that you can do because there are many procedures now that can help to strengthen the Kegel area and those muscles. So that's another important thing and that happens with both men and women as they age is those muscles become uh, the meshing becomes loose. And so that really holds everything up. You know, your entire bladder, your uh, uterus, everything is held up by that muscle. So it's really important to keep that muscle strong. And there's all kinds of Kegel exercises. Um, there's specific yoga Kegel exercises that you can do to strengthen that area of your body. So for women, not only do the hormones impact maybe how you feel or what you're thinking, but if your hormones are off, meaning that there's, you know, you've lost a lot of estrogen and even progesterone and your ratio is off, it can not only cause havoc with you emotionally, it can also start to cause problems in your body. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go on hormones. There are different ways that you can work with it. I mean, one is hormones. Another um, are more organic hormones, which are bioidenticals. And then there's also what you eat, um, what you consume. If you're smoking, that can affect your hormones. If you're overweight, that can affect your hormones. Um, obviously, what we consume in our body always affects um, you know, how our body functions. So it's really important to look into that as well as um, orgasm. Believe it or not, orgasm can also regulate hormones and having regular orgasms in itself can strengthen your Kegel muscles and it can help your body to get back, so and to speak, into the groove of things if you have kind of stepped away from it. Having regular uh, orgasms, whether it's a couple times a week or once a week, that will help also regulate hormones and desire and arousal and all of that. So whether it's through masturbation or intercourse, um, you still want to maintain that part of your body just like anything else. Because if you stop working on it, then you do lose it and you definitely do lose the muscles. Another thing that can happen with women is vaginal atrophy, where the vagina begins to close up, so to speak, and so you will not be able to have intercourse. So just be aware of your body as you age and take care of yourself, especially if you're in a relationship and... Um, you know, everybody needs to be responsible for their own body, their own pleasure. And if you're in a relationship, you have to be also aware of your spouse. And um, if you do have a problem with having sex, then you need to really take care of it because that's also your responsibility. And if you just don't feel desire anymore, then you need to figure out what's going on with that. It's not like when you get older, you don't, you know, have desire anymore. Now, it it does decrease, and it may not decrease with everyone, but the frequency of wanting to have sex or the desire to have sex can decrease, but it could also be because you're not having sex as often. In some uh, women, it can increase, and that can take place if all of a sudden you're in the empty nest situation where you can just be free and you don't have to worry about taking care of children or anyone coming into your house. So with some women, when they uh, hit menopause and then they have an empty nest and they don't have to worry about that, sometimes it opens themselves up to being... Um, more sexual or feeling the freedom to explore. And also they know their bodies so much better. So it doesn't necessarily mean that when a woman turns 50 and above that she no longer wants to have sex. Um, it really just depends on the person. So that's just definitely something to think about. 
So now we're going to talk about men and their, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. Now we're going to talk about men and their hormones because a lot of men, probably at the age, uh, it could be in their 50s, uh, late 50s, they will often notice that their penis is not working the way that it used to work, meaning that their erections are not as strong, meaning they don't feel as intense with their orgasms. Some of them may even say that they don't have as much sperm. Um, some may have a problem with blood flow, meaning that they're not able to have an erection or a full erection. And some men even feel depressed. And so many times they'll turn to hormones, meaning they'll go out and get testosterone. Now, for some men who maybe are feeling depressed and they have low testosterone, that may be better for them than getting on an antidepressant because sometimes low low testosterone in men can cause depression. So that's one thing to think about. As far as um, it improving your erections or improving your orgasm, that really doesn't happen when you take testosterone. It may just make you more horny, but you're still not able to completely function the way you may want to because you don't have the blood flow. And the testosterone has nothing to do with the blood flow. The blood flow is your heart pumping. It has to do with being physically fit. Um, also, lack of blood flow can even be that a person is stressed, um, that things are going on in their life that they feel out of control with. And so they have anxiety. And anxiety can always cut off that blood flow to an erection, and that can happen with a man at any age. So just be aware that the testosterone is not going to help with that. Um, one of the downfalls I've seen when men do take testosterone and they are married is it may now change the um, relationship with their spouse meaning that you were kind of level with your spouse as far as desire when you wanted to have sex, so on and so forth. And now all of a sudden you've increased your sexual desire, your arousal and wanting to have sex and she's still here. And so that can create a friction in the marriage. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I don't think it's always a positive thing to go running to get testosterone unless you really need it. And definitely getting your ratios checked is important. It's hard to tell if someone has, um, like if you're in the normal ratio of testosterone for your age, there really is no reason for you to be taking testosterone. Because what happens is then your body stops producing it on its own. And so when you get off of it, you really your body has forgotten how to do it. And so you put yourself into an even worse situation. So if you do have normal testosterone levels and you're taking it, I definitely don't recommend that. And I'm not sure why some doctors uh, give that to men. And the other thing is, how do you know what your testosterone level is if you haven't been testing it for the past 20 years? Your testosterone level could have always been that way and all of a sudden you're upping it. Uh, and again, that's not going to help you with uh, necessarily stronger erections and also the blood flow. So men, typically, you know, at the age of 50 and above, um, they will not have as strong as an erection as they did. Well, some men do, but some men don't, and that's normal. There's, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Um, it's just there's a chart. I don't have it here, but you have like a man in his 20s where his erections, you know, up. And then as you age, your normal erection, it just naturally goes down. That has to do with your muscles. That has to do with your PC muscles more than anything is that you need to strengthen those muscles. So you can do PC exercises for uh, men too. And so when you have an erection, you can do uh, exercises with that. And I have a video um, on that as well. But there's videos on there for men to be able to strengthen that muscle. And that's also important. 
That will also help with orgasm too and the strength of orgasm. Uh, it's tightening of the muscles because like women, it's the muscles are like mesh and what happens is over time that mesh kind of pulls apart and you really need to strengthen it and bring it together. And so um, that's another important thing. Also diet. Diet is very important. So weight for both men and women will make you have more estrogen. So men, as you get older, if you start to gain a lot of weight and you notice that you've got a lot of weight in your chest and a big belly, um, that is going to make it so that you have uh, more estrogen, probably less testosterone. So the best thing for that is to start exercising and start eating healthy. And you'll also notice when your belly goes down, it makes it look like you have a bigger penis because there's a fat pad around your penis that if that fat pad gets too big, it looks like your penis shrinks. And so when that fat pad decreases, then it makes your penis look bigger. And again, that can be for any age because again, that area um, will hide the penis if there's a lot of fat there. So we talked about exercise. Diet as well. If you're eating a lot of sugar, um, if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, that's another issue that men have as they get older is drunken penis syndrome. I did a video on that. Please watch it. It's a great video. And uh, it is a problem if you're drinking a lot, especially as you get older, because it's all about blood flow. So blood flow is the number one problem that men have with um, maintaining an erection or getting an erection is that they're not getting proper blood flow. And definitely uh, alcohol and nicotine and drugs, they can impede the blood flow going to your penis and therefore you're not going to be able to have an erection. So um, that's really the main points that I wanted to talk about today. One more thing is the psychological aspect of getting older and just the idea of understanding that your body changes. Oh, one more thing too uh, for, for men and women is that when a man is in a sexual situation, if he doesn't maintain an erection throughout the sexual situation, that doesn't mean that he's not aroused. And I have to tell this to women all the time, um, especially when men get older, they may not be able to maintain an erection for such a long period of time, but that's not a problem because the erection comes, the erection goes, and that's very normal. There's, there's absolutely um, nothing wrong with it. You can get the erection back either by physical stimulation or mental stimulation. And in some cases, men may realize this or they may not realize this as they get older, but they definitely will need to have more direct penile stimulation and much uh, more uh, mental stimulation. So sometimes uh, in a relationship where a couple's been together for a while, uh, the mental stimulation needs to be more exciting or you might need to add some more spice to the relationship. This goes the same for women too. Um, she may feel that she needs some more mental stimulation. Um, but for men who used to be able to get an erection from anything when they're younger, that changes very much so when you get older and you really do need a lot more stimulation mentally and physically. So be aware of that. It, it's, it's normal and it's something that it's good to talk with your spouse about so that you can have open communication about it. As well as when couples age, it's really important to have communication about um, how your body's changed, how you feel about your body, how you feel about your sex life. Sometimes couples just feel embarrassed talking about it because they've been together for so long and they think that, you know, they shouldn't have to bring it up. But just as with anything in life, uh, your body changes, your mind changes, your desires change as you age. And if you're not uh, telling your partner about this or your spouse about this, then that is um, that could present a problem. So you need to be open and honest about that. If you feel embarrassed about it, um, you certainly could talk to a counselor 
and maybe have a third person come in and talk about it. Uh, that's what I do in counseling. Many times I'll help spouses even, you know, talk about things that they may feel embarrassed about and or ways to spice up their sex life um, or some physical problems that they may be having that are creating either painful sex or they're not able to maintain an erection or have orgasms. So all of this is very normal as we age. And, uh, you know, we're always talking about health and vitamins and all these other things. But I think many times we forget to talk about our sexual bodies as we age and what happens to them and what happens to our mind, as well as spirituality, too. You know, sometimes um, you may feel more spiritual and want to explore that. Uh, through intimacy and, and sex and deep breathing and, and stuff like that to bring that into the marriage um, to make it more interesting and to have like a deeper connection. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you are watching it and you're married, please watch it with your significant other or spouse. I think it's important for uh, both people to be aware of what's going on with their body. And as you know, I believe everyone deserves to have a healthy sex life, and so do you. Make it a great day.